happened, bro? I saw that. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Face Off. I hope you're having a great day. I'm Pierre, and today I'm going to be comparing the three processors that I consider to be in the sweet spot for high performance and value. First up is Intel's 13th generation i5-13600K. It's on the LGA 1700 platform. And as you can see here, the 13600K comes in right around $300, 294 to 319 is the retail pricing. And at the higher end of Raptor Lake, it can go up to $589 for the 13900K. Now, these numbers look pretty intimidating, but if you look at the ones that really affect gaming, they're actually pretty comparable. And if you look at the value that each one brings for a gamer, the 13600K needs to be looked at. So the base clock is 3.0 on the 13900K and, and 3.5 on the 13600. And the boost clock is 5.8 on the 13.9, while it's 5.1 on the 13.6. Now, the 13.6 can be overclocked to 5.6 pretty easily and at reasonable temps and, and power ratings. So, even though it's a 5.1 here, I was able to push it up to 5.6 without really stressing it much and running it on a 240 millimeter AIO. Next up is the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. This is the top dog gaming processor of the AM4 socket lineup. The 3D VCache has proven to be incredible for gaming performance. And this is the chip to beat in terms of outright value for high performance gaming CPUs. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see that I feature this processor a lot because I'm just amazed by the innovation and ingenuity in design that resulted in a multi-generational leap in performance on a five-year-old platform. I mean, when AM4 was released, Intel was on Z270 boards. Right now they're on Z790, so just think about that. That's pretty crazy. Even though the new Raptor Lake chips have been very impressive in terms of overclocking potential. I think that the 7000 X3Ds are going to set a new precedent for gaming performance. Last up is the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X. It is on AMD's new AM5 platform. It runs on DDR5. Gaming performance is pretty good. It belongs in the pack with all the other elite gaming CPUs available today. But when you compare it to the value proposition of these two other chips it's competing against, it's pretty difficult to argue for. My personal conspiracy theory is that AMD tuned the first round of 7000s to be very close to the 5800X3D in terms of performance so that it could keep its maximum proposition value until they released the next gen X3Ds. I think these are filler episodes for gamers. In terms of multi-threading performance, the, the 7000s are, are great, and I'll, I'm gonna do some productivity comparisons as well, but for gamers, I don't think there's any reason to consider going to AM5 at this point in time. DDR5 is continuing to get faster and cheaper. The CPUs are, are coming down in price, and availability is going up in general. So, unless you're an early adopter like myself and just interested in testing everything out, then, there's not really any reason to consider going to AM5 just yet. For most people, I'd say. So if I'm ever looking at a CPU, I'm never considering it just an individual component. The performance of the CPU is dependent on the RAM and motherboard that you choose to pair with it. So I'm gonna show you the components I used in my setup to test. And obviously, this is on the higher end, but I'm gonna show you the most affordable motherboard and. RAM option that's going to give you the same performance shown here. So the 13600K was run with 7200 CL34 DDR5. And that's probably the priciest component of the setup here. Now it is necessary to get fast RAM to get the most performance out of this chip. I suspect that you might be able to get similar or maybe even better performance on a DDR4 board with very fast DDR4. I don't have a DDR4 board to test just yet. I will have one soon. So about 800 bucks on the Intel setup. 
Next up is the 7700X. This only runs on DDR5 and it's really optimal to just get Expo rated RAM. You can find 6000 CL30 for around 200 bucks now. So overall with the B650, you're looking at about 864 bucks. Lastly is the 5800X3D. And while it's great that 13600K has great overclocking potential with good cooling, it does require a little bit of knowledge and a good cooling setup, which can add up when you're trying to minimize the cost of a build. The 5800X3D comes pretty much tuned to maximum performance out of the box and you don't really need to do anything to it to get it to that level. If you are interested in tuning it a little bit, it has a lot of headroom for undervolting, which, which results in higher boost clocks maintained longer and better power and thermal efficiency. If you're interested in learning how to do that, I have a quick three minute guide on how to do that right here. In addition to that, it can use pretty much any old DDR4 you can find and still achieve that maximum performance. So in order to accentuate that fact, I ran the RAM at the slowest, at pretty much the slowest speed possible. It's 2667 CL20 on DDR4. So that's also something to keep in mind here. It is very plug and play and it offers a lot of peace of mind for those who just want maximum performance without having to take the time to tune and tinker with the hardware. Okay, so after getting a few minutes to look at all the stats and compare results, here's what I found the most interesting. The FPS averages and max of each chip, I'd say is within the same range of actual feel in terms of performance. You can see that the 7700X is actually number one here in terms of average and max the 13600K coming in second, and the X3D coming in third. The gap between them all is not that large, maybe 10%. And in terms of actual game feel, they don't feel that much different at all, okay? So in terms of the 1% lows, this is where there is a big difference between the chips. I would say it's a wash between the 13600K and the 7700X. But the 5800X3D coming in at 84, that does create a little bit of a difference in feel in overall smoothness of the game. I'd say it's one notch below the other two processors, actual feel and smoothness of the game. CPU temps, really low here on all of them, but I mean, I'm in 1080p, so it's not really that demanding. The 5800X3D is running the hottest here at 56 degrees. Now I didn't undervolt the chip and I suspect that if I did, it would have been probably within the same range as the other two. Nonetheless, in this test, I didn't run an undervolt, so it was running at 56. In terms of CPU power, the 7700X is at 63, while the 5800X3D is at 59, so I'd call that a wash. The 13600K is a little more power hungry than the other two. It runs maybe 15% more wattage and that is enough to mention in my opinion i'm just going to throw up the gpu stats real quick this just shows that the usage is about equal the temps are about equal vram usage varies across the different chips but this is just to show that we're looking at cpu performance under these settings so i also did some testing in 1440 low and the results are pretty much mirrored to 1080p with slightly lower numbers on the FPS side and pretty much equal numbers on the CPU side. 
Again, throwing up the GPU stats to show that the temp and usage are equal. And in 1440 low, comparing these numbers will enable us to compare CPU performance. So in order to gauge the value each of these chips brings in their current configurations for Rust specifically, I calculated the average cost per FPS and how much FPS and the average FPS per watt produced by each chip. Now keep in mind these numbers are here to compare the value between the chosen CPU, motherboard, and RAM only. So first up, the 13600K. Let's see how much it costs per FPS. It averaged out to $4.34 per FPS and then about 2.67 FPS produced per watt. Next up is the 7700X. It's coming in at $4.26 per FPS and then about 3.28 FPS per watt. A lot higher there. Last up is the 5800X3D. It's coming in at a low 258 per FPS and then producing 3.21 FPS per watt. So I've created a scoring system here to rank CPUs in terms of value. And it's a simple formula. It's cost per FPS times two minus FPS per watt. That gives us a P-score and a lower P-score represents a better value in the system. So let's go check out the P-scores for each of these CPUs in Rust. Coming in third place is the 13600K at 6.01. In second place comes the 7700X with a score of 5.24. And coming in with the P-score two and a half times lower than the second place finisher is the 5800X3D with a score of 1.95. So I think the P-score is doing a pretty good job of showing which CPU gives the best value. I've started a leaderboard here and I'll continue to add to this as I test more and more CPUs. So here are my final thoughts after getting to analyze all the results. If you're looking to build a new PC, you want elite gaming performance and you want the outright best value, the 5800XAD is going to be your choice. The motherboard and RAM options are the cheapest available out of the three and it's pretty much tuned to maximum performance right out of the box looking at the 13600k this thing is a little gaming beast and if you're willing to spend a little more and you're able to tune hardware a little bit overclock your cpu and memory then this is a good option and I'm really impressed by what Intel has done with this chip. The 7700X had the best performance in this test, and I think it actually ran the most efficient in terms of power and cooling. So while it's an efficient chip, I can't really argue for it against the value proposition the X3D represents right now for gamers. In terms of productivity, that might be a different story. And I'll be doing different productivity comparisons as well. But for gamers, I'd recommend either the X3D or the 13600K out of these three chips. I'd say the X3D is for those who just kind of want a plug and play solution and the max performance without much tinkering around. I'd say with the Intel, it requires a little more know-how a little it's a little more expensive and you're gonna need better cooling but you also have a higher performance ceiling and more of an upgrade path for the future so I hope this information was helpful if it was please consider dropping a like and subscribing for more content like this and have a great day